Nigel Farage is undoubtedly one of the great survivors of British politics. The controversial ex-UKIP leader is now back at the forefront of campaigning. Why? Well, because he smells blood, and the opportunity to hammer the Conservatives is too irresistible a challenge to ignore. In a no-holds-barred phone-in with Nick Ferrari, he set his sights on burying the Conservative Party once and for all. Before I intervened, they'd lost this election already. I've intervened because we need a coherent voice of opposition in Parliament and in the country. And do you know what, Nick? I believe I can do that better than the current Conservative Party. Can you tell me that one day you might lead the Conservative Party or can you rule it out if the ball would come out of the back of the scrum? I, I think something new is going to emerge on the centre-right. I don't know what it's called. But, but do I think I'm capable of leading a national opposition to a Labour Party with a big majority where I can stand up and hold them to account on issues? Yes. Well, let's say it's called conform or whatever, whatever. Yes. So a merged party, you would be happy to lead a merged party? Yes. Would you be happy to lead the Conservative Party? Well, not as it currently is. I mean, I wouldn't oh, even... No, so no, 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 no. Look, if I, it were reworked, Mr Farage... They may be dead. They may well be dead. This may well be the end of their journey. But if it's not, you would be prepared to consider leading I the I would be party. prepared to lead the centre-right in this country, a centre-right that stands up for small business, a centre-right that believes in borders, a centre-right that isn't scared of standing up for the British people. With Labour some way ahead in the voting intention and reform now sneaking into second place in one of the latest polls, how do Labour feel about the prospect of facing Nigel Farage at PMQs? We've had Conservative candidates put Nigel Farage, not Rishi Sunak, on their leaflets. And I've got to tell you, if the Conservatives get back in, if they scrape back in... But if that's you get the in and Farage chaos. is in opposition, how do look, you feel about look, that? Look, we'll take him on. We'll take him on on the issues. We'll take him on on the arguments. And crucially, we will take him on by delivering real change in this country. Nigel Farage is a populist politician. Uh, and look, he's a, he's a formidable campaigner. I don't underestimate Nigel Farage. But he's also full of a lot of hot air. And he never gets called to account for delivering the things he campaigns on. Rishi Sunak's snap election took everyone by surprise, including the Conservatives themselves. And this lack of preparedness is what Mr Farage blamed for some unsavoury candidates making the ballot paper for his reform party. Let me take you to a candidate called Steve Chilcott. Never, Islam never, and, never heard of him. Standing in London. Never heard Islam of him. and Nazis are the same thing. Sean Matthews standing in the seat in Lincolnshire talking about children having their penises chopped off. If we come back to Hitler yeah. references I could go through so many well, of your candidates. Well I'm sorry, Oof. hang on a second I think, I think, I think, Jake Fraser I think people Cheshire. being alarmed people being alarmed about um, you know, sex conversion therapy for children. I mean, you think you'll find that's quite a big majority view, let's, actually, Let's Nick. come back you know, to I bet the... most of your listeners are worried about it, I bet you. Jake Fraser in Cheshire, the British Never public is like He's, there's a health holocaust, is what COVID was. Uh, John Edwards, who's standing in one of the South End, Southampton sorry, seats. Vaccine producers are like Nazi armament companies. I could go on and on yeah. and on. Well, these are, do you know While what? your image do, is carefully do you know, honed. Do you know what? You're, are, you're, you're I army behind I've you. never honed an image in my life. I'm who I am. I've never pretended to be anything different to what the I am. These are, these are these not... Are, yeah, they're ordinary people. That's how people out there speak. That's how they feel. Ordinary they, people, they Mr Farage, say on Islam Facebook, and Nazis are the same on Facebook, thing. On Facebook. Fa well, I can tell you something. I'll go on. They the, both want Churchill, to kill Jews. No, stop, stop. Go Do you know why Churchill... Do you know why Churchill, in 1933 was almost the only person to see Hitler as a threat because he'd seen it with fanatical Islam when he fought against it in the 1890s. Now, we've moved on, we're 80 years on, but people are allowed, people are allowed to have opinions. People are allowed to express views. You're not supporting the idea that Islam and Nazis, just to clarify there, Mr Farage. No, I'm scared of all fanaticisms. You're equally scared of Islam as you would no, no, be... No, 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 no. You're, getting, you're, you're making no, a I'm very you. big no, mistake I'm asking here. you. I'm not talking about Islam. OK. At all. In fact... Very, but your candidate is. Islam very, and Nazis are the same thing. A very, very prominent... They both want to kill Jews. They both hate very, homosexuals. A very prominent businessman who happens to be a follower of Islam has joined our party this week. I'll be unveiling him next week. The vast majority of moderate Muslims in this country agree with similar principles to you and me. What is worrying 
is Islamism, extremism. And, right. and, and I tell you what, most Islamic people would agree with that statement. It wasn't long before Mr Farage had some of his own previous comments unearthed by a caller who accused him of telling a pack of lies. You made a statement a couple of weeks ago that the streets are streets in Oldham that can't speak English. Could mm. you tell me... Name a street in Oldham where the entire street can't speak English, please. I will quote you from The Guardian. How about that? Um, Helen Pidd, who was the northern correspondent for The Guardian a few years ago, and she described how she went down a street with an interpreter. No one spoke English. They had any vague idea of who Jeremy Corbyn was, but they were all apparently voting Labour. So you didn't know it personally? You're quoting an account from a journalist? I, I, I had seen in Oldham... Uh, I, I was surprised at the lack of English that was spoken. I talked to people working in healthcare, etc., who said there were quite a lot of people in Oldham who'd been there often for 20, 30 years that barely knew the language. But I do quote from Helen Pitt of The Guardian. Yeah, but you didn't know yourself. Just, just to I, No, I saw myself no, yeah. that English wasn't being spoken but very much in areas, Mike, yeah. Mike is in Oldham. Mike, you come back to Nigel Farage. I think, you you talk, I, I think you're talking a pack of lies, uh, Nigel. You well, made a statement. You name, you name a street that can't speak English. And the right. reason is, right, the last 10 years of my working life, I worked for Oldham Street Cleaning, and the biggest Asian area is Glodick. Yes. Now, I don't know a street in Glodick where the old population couldn't speak English. All right, well, many, maybe... many people couldn't, but not the old street. You're making this accusation. Well, maybe the Guardian are liars. OK. Well, are you, though? Have, if you, I mean, no, you've, you've, no, every I, repetition I, is a fresh I, defamation. I am... I am, I am very clear of what people, I say, particularly in the healthcare industry, were saying to me that but, the numbers not even bothering to learn English were alarming. But this gentleman works in Oldham last year on this Nigel Farage. Surely he yeah. knows better than the Guardian well, journalist well, or you. I don't know whether he knocks on doors and talks to people. And Nick had kept the receipts too, drawing Mr Farage's attention to a promise he made in 2017. Do you remember a promise you said when you had a show here on LBC, I think in 2017? If Brexit a disaster... I will go and live abroad. I'll go and live somewhere else. Well, economically, Brexit's working. Um, we, we've gone Explain from... Explain that to me. I will. We've gone from being the world's seventh biggest exporter to the world's fourth biggest exporter. That's good. Right. And we're signing trade deals all over the world. Where Brexit has been a failure and where people are upset is not because of Brexit but because of the Conservative Party's total failure to implement it. But, I mentioned uh, to you already the 4,000 regulations Sunak was going to scrap and didn't. And on immigration, we now have legal and immigration running at numbers, even in Mr Blair's time, we couldn't accommodate. But isn't that that a is not No, 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 no. It's a failure to deliver. It's a failure of the Conservative Party. Brexit gives us the ability to make our own... So how should that have own... worked so that... The migration figure, what should have happened that the Conservative Party did not put in place? What Boris Johnson did was to set the level at which you could come lower than we'd ever seen it before and to open it up to the but, whole world. But, that is, that Brexit has not been implemented. That is true. It's not a failure of Brexit. But, I mean, Nick, we're, tax we're are down in charge. Tax receipts are down £40 billion, pounds, Mr Farage. Oh, tax receipts are up. Tax receipts are down. I mean, look, what is it? They're down well, £40 billion. Pounds. Well, have a guess what's happened. Do you know our productivity is lower than the French? No, well, I've never seen a Frenchman work after lunch. I mean, I can't believe these figures. Mass migration, I, 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 mass I think migration. The do run in France after mass lunch migration. Right. Mass migration Planes is off. making us poorer. Is damaging productivity, and it is the biggest influence on the UK economy. And I do accept the last call we had. It takes time to train people, mm -hmm. but you go and talk to engineering companies. You talk to others. We are not encouraging young people to learn skills and trades they can use for the rest of their life. But the unflappable Farage is a savvy political operator. Give him an opening, and he won't shy away from unleashing the bombastic rhetoric that's made him one of the most popular and controversial politicians in the country. The penny is beginning to drop. Mass migration is making us poorer. Mass migration means our kids and grandkids can't get houses. Mass migration means rents are up between 20 and 30 percent in the last three years alone in this country. Mass migration means I almost missed this interview. The traffic is now so bad on our roads because six million more people live here than when the Conservatives came to power. Now you can argue economics all you like, but I'll tell you something. This is now the fifth manifesto in a row from the Conservatives that has promised they'll reduce net migration. No one believes them. And Labour have almost nothing to say. The Conservatives thought they'd kept a lid on the tinderbox that is Nigel Farage, but his LBC phone-in shows that the gloves are now completely off.